Ariel Hawani in Las Vegas, Nevada with a very special MMAfighting.com exclusive. We're inside the UFC headquarters joined by UFC President Dana White. And Dana, uh, for the past year or so, you've been telling us you've got a lot of quote unquote big things happening in the future and, and, and more specifically this year. Um, I think you have a very big announcement to make. Um, UFC has purchased Strikeforce. Is that true? That is true. Um, yeah, we, we, like I say to you guys all the time, every year we, we take this thing to, to another level and, and some of the deals that we're working on now, international and, and all the other things and obviously you know, acquiring Strikeforce now. When did this become official? Um, it's literally official right now. It literally just closed the deal. Why did you actually make this deal? Why did you go out and purchase Strikeforce? Well, as we continue to grow and, and, and expand into all these other countries, one of the things that I keep telling you every time we talk is, is we need more fights. We need more fights, more fights. And let's face the facts. You know, Strikeforce is a brand that fans, fans have come to like. You know, that they do have a following. People, uh, people enjoy the fights that they're putting on, and uh, it made sense to us. When did you and your partner sit back and say, okay, you know, they're doing good things, like you said, they're developing a following. It's time for us to at least inquire about purchasing them. When did that happen? Well, I, you know, I don't know exactly when everything went down and when we said, hey, let's inquire about, about purchasing them. But, you know, when you're in a business or in an industry, you know, like this, you know, things are always firing back and forth. Um, and, 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 and again, I say this all the time, I think that our job is to put on the big fights that the fans want to see, and as we continue to, to, to travel into these other countries, making sure that we have the, uh, the right fights to, to, to put on in these other countries too, to, to get the fans interested and excited. Um, how long did it take for the deal to become final? Uh, you know, we've been, <laughs> we've been working on it. Over a year? Month? No, 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 not even close. Not even close. Less than six months? No, it happened quickly. Happened quickly. Yeah. Um, did, when you contacted them, was there some resistance or were they open right away to the idea of selling the company to you? Um, you know, I don't want to disclose any of, the, any of the details and how the deal was done or how it went back and forth. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the reality is we, we, we now own Strikeforce. We know that there is not one sole owner of Strikeforce. Uh, Scott Coker owns a, a portion of it, Silicon Valley Sports Entertainment. There are some investors. How do you go about purchasing a, a company um, which is sort of divided into these you know, separate owners? How does that happen? Well, it's, it's, it's no different than if, if one guy owned the company. You go in, you know, you, there, there's a guy obviously who's, who's, the, you know, who, who's the guy who can make the deal for the company and, and you go in and you make a deal. No different than if you were buying a house or, or anything else. So does this mean guys like Alistair Overeem, uh, Fedor Emelianenko, uh, all those big names, Nick Diaz, Paul Daly, all those guys, they're going to become UFC fighters starting next month? No, 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 no. The strike Force is going gonna, is gonna to continue to run business as usual. You know, th there's contracts in place. The, these guys are on Showtime. Strike Force pulls, uh, pulls good ratings for Showtime. I think Showtime's happy with them. And all those contracts will be uh, honored. These guys are going to remain Strike Force fighters. They're not going to be UFC. Could... Um, guys from the UFC uh, leave and end up over in Strike Force. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, th th that's really the way it works. Now, it is literally business as usual. So two Scott rounds. Coker. We've signed a deal with Scott Coker. Right. He's staying on. You know, and Scott's a, a guy whom I've. All, I mean, you've seen over the years me battle with guys and go back and forth. You know, and and fire bad things back and forth between uh, different promotions, but I've never had a bad thing to say about Scott Coker. I've known Scott since the K1 days when he was promoting here in, in uh, Las Vegas, and you know, Scott's a good guy. But when you purchased uh, WC um, and, and then you put it on Versus, it looked like a Zufa product. Right. Will that be the case here with, with Strikeforce on Showtime? Will it look like a Zufa product? Well, Showtime's, Showtime's, uh, Showtime does all, all the, uh, the production. Right. For, for Strike Force, um, I, I think with our experience and everything else that we have, the, you know, I, I, literally being in the business ten years and creating this industry, I think there's a lot of things that we can add to the show. Uh, you know, uh, behind the house things that that you do never see and never notice, and in the house that, that you will see and will notice. Uh, you have made your feelings towards uh, Showtime very clear over the last couple of years. You are not a fan of theirs. You've said some things about Ken Hirschman. Clearly, there is some tension between you two guys. How is that going to actually work out 
because now you are essentially partners with them, right? Right. Yeah. Well, the beauty, <laughs> the beauty in a, in a, in a, uh, in, in a business like this, in that you know, there's three partners in the UFC. It's me, Frank and Lorenzo. Uh, it's me, Frank, Lorenzo, and actually Abu Dhabi. Right. Uh, Flash. Yeah. So these guys, uh, Lorenzo can go over there and deal with Showtime. I'm sure, I'm sure the last thing uh, Showtime wants to see is me show up at the doorstep and come over there and, and start having conversations. And, and that's no big deal. Lorenzo can deal with Showtime. Have you or Lorenzo talked to them yet? Uh, no. How long is... Well, the relationship over at Showtime is between, you know, Showtime, the Ken Hirschman and all the guys that work over there, and Scott Coker. Right. And Scott Coker will continue to, 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 to uh, run and maintain that relationship. And, you know, the other interesting thing is, you know, there's a lot of other guys over on that side of the table that don't like me. You know, you got the M1 Global guys. Uh, Dan Henderson's probably not a big fan either. You know, uh, but, but that's Scott Coker. Scott Coker will continue to run that business, and like I said, it will, it will be business as usual over there. Here's the thing I don't understand. You mentioned the M1 Global guys. You've wanted to sign Fedor for many years. Everyone wants to see him fight You know the Brock Lesnar's of the world, the Cain Velasquez's of the world, even though he's on this losing streak. Now that you own Strikeforce, wouldn't it you know, be more uh, you know, financially lucrative for you to bring him over to the UFC and have him fight on your show? Well, one thing, listen. And, you know, we can talk about the Ken Hirschmans, the, the Fedors, the M1s, the Dan Hendersons, and whoever else over there, you know, doesn't like me or whatever your opinion is of me. One thing that we've never done, and nobody can ever say this in the 10 years of doing business, is we honor contracts. If you have a contract with us, we honor that contract and we honor the deal. And we will do the same there. Uh, M1 has a deal with Showtime, with, that's completely separate, whatever their deal is and what they're doing. And Fedor is, 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 a, is a strike force Showtime fighter. And he will continue to fight in, 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 in strike force on as Showtime. As far as you know, there is no uh, fighter out there that has a clause in his contract, let's say Dan Henderson, for example. If the UFC purchases strike force, my, my contract is, you know. No, it, well, here's the thing. Uh, the relationships o over at Showtime are all managed. And, and, and handled by Scott Coker. And Scott Coker does a great job in, in, in creating these relationships with fighters and fight camps, and, and that will continue over there. So now that you, know, you have these two separate entities, essentially, right, um, will there be you know, a sort of Super Bowl? You know, no. You, no, we be, won't be doing any super fights. At all? No. There Are won't be any super fights. That, not really, no. Alistair Overeem to come over and fight, you know, unify well, the title, something like that. When, when I say business as usual, we don't co-promote. Right. Even, with, <laughs> Even when we own stuff, it. Yeah. We don't co-promote, period. And how about, uh, you know, I'm sure there are a lot of people watching who work for Strikeforce, you know, matchmakers, you know, mm -hmm. production guys, web guys. Are they all keeping their jobs or are, yeah. are UFC people or Zufa yeah, employees coming at over? At this point in time, we're not planning on, they, they have an office up in San Jose, they do their thing, and, and like I said, Business as usual. Scott Coker will continue to run um, Strike Force with with his his people. Can we add to it? Can can we supplement and help them grow? Absolutely. Can we can we help them internationally and and, and make it bigger everywhere? Absolutely. And like I said, can we make some tweaks? You know, with our experience and knowledge to what they're doing now to make it better. Absolutely, we can. How much did you pay for it? Um, can't tell you that. <laughs> Was it a good deal? Yeah. Uh, when, when have you ever uh, seen me do something that I consider a bad deal? You know, there's been offers on the table for us to do lots of things from network television to you name it. Um, network subscription, whatever it is, if I don't think it's the right deal, then, then, then we don't do it. Compared to the Pride deal, which organization did you pay more for? <laughs> Good question. That I won't answer. <laughs> which is a bigger deal in the history of this sport? Because Strikeforce was a competitor within North America. Yeah, and they were on the, the Pride deal was huge. Was, I mean, was us, acquiring, on the decline? us acquiring Pride and, yeah. I mean, uh, realistically, at the, at the time, I mean, when you look at it, any way you look at it, and I'll, you know, we own Strikeforce and all this other, I'll still say the UFC is, is the premier brand in mixed martial arts. And we, I, I've been saying for 10 years, we have a plan to take this thing global and make this thing the biggest sport in the world. And... We're coming up with some things this year, again, that, that are going to, you know, we, we're going into 55,000 seats in, in Toronto, Canada. We just sold out in Australia again, and we're planning on going to China 
Um, we actually, the, the last fight we did where the, where the kid from uh, China fought, mm -hmm. pulled killer numbers over there, it, it did great. We're going to China, we're going to Korea, we're going to Japan, we're going to India, we're going to all these other places and what we're doing now is, is, is we're, we're putting together the game plan and the model on how we move out into all these other countries. And you say you're going to honor the Strikeforce deal with Showtime. How long is that deal for? Um, off the top of my head, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's around two years. So once that deal is done, are you gonna, you know, are you gonna then maybe look to merge the two? Oh no! Listen, I, I have no idea what we'll do. But when I say business as usual, right. let's say, um, you know, some of the fighters their contracts expire, I then have the right to go in and negotiate for the UFC and and, and try to acquire some of this talent. Really? It's business as usual. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm looking, I'm looking to get. Whatever talent Strike Force has coming up, or whatever talent Strike Force doesn't have, and Scott's going to be doing the same thing. It is business as usual. There are a lot of uh, personalities within the Strike Force organization that uh, you know. We talked about Hirschman, but Josh Barnett, Paul Daly, um, Frank Shamrock, you know, works uh, on the yep, production side. Right. Again, all friends of mine. Yeah, all, yeah, all, all great all, friends, right? All, all my buddies. I mean, is, is Josh Barnett out of a job now? No, Josh Barnett has a contract with Strike Force, and he has a deal with Scott Coker. That that deal will remain in place. Uh, strike force. I won't be negotiating to try to sign Josh Barnett right. when Josh Barnett's contract's up. But um, yeah, what same do you think old. Of the strike force product. When you watch it on TV. What do I think of it? Um, to be honest with you, I've only seen it a couple times. I haven't watched enough of Strike Force to uh, listen. The reality is, it doesn't matter what I think. There are fans out there who enjoy the product and want to watch it. Let's say it's UFC 130, right, in, uh, in May. Um, will we see, we'll be watching the pay-per-view and see a commercial for Strike Force to promote their upcoming event on June 18th? Will, will there be some sort of synergy there? Yeah. Yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, listen, if you look at what we do, um, I, I don't think anybody promotes or, uh, you know, as far as social media, you name it, n nobody does it bigger and better than we do. So why would we not, you know? Do you, you think know? That, that might confuse the fans, though? Why are they Are not? they confused now? No, they're not because they're two separate entities. So right. No mixing and matching. So what would they be confused about? Why are there Strike Force commercials? What is this Strike Force? You know, the, the name Strike Force doesn't have the same kind of impact as, as the UFC brand name. So what what is this? You I know, agree. You know, you've often talked about the alphabet soup uh, yep. problem in, in boxing. Now you have another. You know what I mean? And, yep. and I think that's part of the reason why it was good to to merge UFC and WC. Right. So the, well, the reason we merged WC and, and UFC is because we needed those lighter weight classes. You know, it made sense for these guys to, to, to come into the UFC. You talked a lot about um, women's fighting. Right. Uh, you, you said famously on TMZ recently, it'll never happen. Right. They ov obviously have women's divisions. Right. Business as usual. You know, Scott Coker will continue to put on uh, uh, women's fights and sign women and Whatever the deal may be. Is there a chance it's sort of a sort of a, your way of dipping your toe into the water and, and seeing that this could actually be a viable part of your company, women's fighting, and maybe in the UFC? My big problem with, with women's fighting is what it always was. It's that there's not enough real good girls out there to create a division. Can you do some cool fights here and there? Yeah, but you know, not not enough to create an entire division. Will we see Dana White at you at the Strike Force events? Uh, probably not. I don't think so. Well, here's the thing, and, and, and you and I have talked about it 50 times in this interview already. There's a lot of people over there that I have, you know, I don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable over there. That's Scott Coker's deal. He runs that show, and uh, it's business as usual. If we didn't own the company, you wouldn't see me hanging out at a Strike Force event. You probably won't see me at one now that we do. Uh, maybe not you, but someone like Joe Silver, Lorenzo. Will yeah, we see you? Yeah, I'm sure you'll see yeah, people over there. Yeah. Obviously, we'll have to ask him this, but what was Scott's reaction when you approached him? Was he open to selling? Was he ready? Because he always struck us as a guy who, you know, maybe like to put on six or seven events, but not 30 events. Not go and, crazy. You know yeah. what I mean? And maybe yeah. this is his way of cashing out, is we're, it? We're, we're, we're a little aggressive. I, yeah, I, would, I would agree with that. Um, no, but Scott was, Scott was into it. Uh, you know, obviously, this guy's been, you know, putting on fights for years with K1 and, and now with Strike Force. And, and, you know, he was doing ISKA before that, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this is what the guy does. This is what he does for a living. Okay. And if you get the opportunity, you know, for, for, for a deal like this, why would you not do it? I know I'm bombarding you with a lot of questions. Just have a couple left. What else is new? <laughs> um, so, 
is there a chance that Showtime find and said we don't want to be in business with 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 you guys? We're done. It could We're be. It. MMA yeah, it, it, I I would I wouldn't say it couldn't happen. Um, Have they said that to you? No, I I, I wouldn't say I, I would never say never. But um, I don't know. I, I would think that. When you're in business, sometimes, you know, and I'm not the best at this, but sometimes you got to put your personal feelings aside and, and do what's best for your company. Was the primary motivation behind this to eliminate competition, or was it because you wanted to acquire their video library, or was it because you wanted their talent? What was the real reason why you did this? Well, we did. Well, you know what our goal is. Everybody knows what our goal is. Number one, we do acquire their library, and we do have the largest mixed martial arts library on the planet. Number two, um, as we continue to go into these other countries and we continue to grow and expand the business, we, we, I've been saying this for the last year and a half, we need more fighters. We need more fighters. We need to put on more fights. But was part of it to eliminate the competition? They were number two, right? I, I don't know. I, there was a big gap. You know, I, yeah. I, 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 there were some when when you go to ranking, guys, there's, when you talk about competition, there are literally shows going on everywhere all over this country. I mean, not only this country, all over the world. I think that uh, up in Toronto, since we got, went up there and got Ontario done, there, there's like 20 shows scheduled just in Ontario now. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and, that, and, and Ohio, when we got in and opened up Ohio, they did like 142 shows just in Ohio. And, and the list goes on and on from state to state and country to country. So mixed martial arts fights are happening all over the world with tons of different promoters. You know, what we're looking to do is expand into these other countries, grow the sport, grow the brand, obviously bigger, and we need more fights. We need more fighters. And so it was just like the Pride. Right. We, when, when we went in and, and we bought Pride, we acquired their library and we acquired their talent. We went in and did this deal with Showtime, I, I mean with uh, Strike Force, we acquire the, uh, the the library, and then now these guys will run a, a, on Showtime, and the thing does well on Showtime. Uh, Sh Strikeforce has a relationship with uh, FEG K1. You know they 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 share talent. What's going to happen to that relationship? Whatever relationships and deals Scott Coker has in place, I'm sure Scott will continue to do. And the San Jose deal. You know they the Silicon Valley Sports Entertainment Group own. The HP Pavilion. That's why they ran a lot of events there. Same thing, even though they're not the owners anymore. Will there still? Yeah. Will San Jose still be the sort of home of strike force? No doubt about it. And and you'll it see you uh, Vegas. You'll see UFC events there too. No, we will. Yeah. So it won't come to Vegas. Strike Force, the company. Strike Force? Yeah. Who knows? Strike Force could go anywhere. Strike okay. Force could end up in Canada, you know, and 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 other parts of the world. I have to admit, it is very surreal to just hear you talking about Strike Force. Yeah. It's pretty it's surreal for me. Calling it but you know what? Force. This happens. You know, it's the same thing that happened with Pride. You know, we, we ended up acquiring Pride and uh, WC and Strike Force, and you know. Will you look to now acquire goes. the Bellators of the world? <laughs> I doubt it. No. I doubt you. You know, I, I, I never say never, but um, what we have now is we have two companies where we can go out and you know build and showcase more talent. All right, so to recap, you have purchased Strikeforce, business as usual, no one from Strikeforce is coming over to the UFC, Strikeforce is remaining, at least for now, on Showtime, um, none of the UFC fighters, at least for now, are going to Strikeforce and vice versa. It's well, there could be guys that end up in Strikeforce that f fight in the UFC. But not like but there won't be Pierre. No. There would be more yeah, yeah, guys who, who are... Whoever, right. whoever Coker is interested in that you know, is available to go over to Strikeforce, and the same thing goes for me. Whoever's available and I want them for UFC. So if someone gets injured and you need a late replacement and... and, and no, I don't eggs, think... No, no. It won't be like that. We're talking about when deals are up. Somebody's deal is up with the UFC and we start... No different than Who's the... Gonna negotiate? You're going to negotiate no, against Coker? No different than the Dan Henderson deal. Right. Yeah. No different. That's a separate business that has a separate income. They have their own budgets and everything else that, 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 that they do. They have their own television deals. And if they're, they're that interested in acquiring, it's no different than it would have been before. And as the owner, you can look at it and say, I don't like this deal. You're paying Dan Henderson 250000 He's not worth it. He's gone. You know, you, the, you know the best way that I can explain this thing? Mm -hmm. It's like when Viacom split. You know how that works, right? Right, right. There's two different guys that run. It, yeah. that, there's two different guys that run. Viacom is the same company. Two different guys run two different portions of it. It's split in half. You know, they're two separate companies. 
and they run that way. And that's exactly the way this is going to run. And is this good for the fighters? Because now there's... Yeah. I mean, they can still go to. Let's say Paul Daly was unsigned, right? And he had his issue with you. Could he still go to Coker and, and, and say, "Let's make a deal"? Or because Zoo phones and you, well, have to, you know what I mean? I'm still not a Paul Daly fan. You I'm know what saying, I mean? Paul Daly, I, I still don't, you know, like at all or condone what he did, and he will never fight in the UFC. But Strike Force, okay. Yeah. Scott, that's Scott Coker's deal. But if there was Plus, a, he's got a contract. Right, but I'm saying... Paul Daly has a contract with Strikeforce right now, and, and it will be honored. If there was a guy who's a free agent who you had a beef with, let's say Barnett wasn't signed, could he still go and sign with Strikeforce? Because... That's up to Scott. That's up to Scott. You're, yeah. you're giving him the power. That's up to Scott. He is the Dana White of, of, he, of Scott, Strikeforce remains. And he'll Scott, still be the... Scott, the, Coke, Scott Coker runs Strikeforce, and that will continue. You know? Unbelievable. Anything else? Did we forget anything? You want to tell us how much you paid for it? <laughs> I don't think no. so. I think that's it. Good deal. Yeah. All right, there you have it. The UFC has purchased Strikeforce. Business has just picked up in the MMA world. <laughs> I don't think anyone saw this coming. I bet. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you, bro. Always a pleasure. Congratulations. Thanks.